Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Hideaway Homestead. Today, we're going to be talking about something a little different. Um, I've been sort of wanting to do this for quite a while now, and I just haven't had the, the right time to do it. But I'm going to be talking today a little bit about the um, uh, welfare of your animals on your farm or homestead. I'm going to show some of the stuff that we use uh, medication-wise and some of the other things that we use here on the farm for the various animals that we keep and hopefully give you an idea of maybe uh, starting up a, an animal um, first aid kit, if you will. That's what I call mine. So uh, stay tuned and we'll show you what we do. Okay, so this is uh, some of the stuff that we use here on the farm. I went and got a toolbox. This is just a regular toolbox you find at Home Depot. I think it's where I got this one from. And just sort of turned it into a first aid kit. And I've got all sorts of things inside here. Um, depending on what kind of animals you have will determine the items that you put in your toolbox or your first aid box. I um, want to start out by saying that we are not veterinarians. We're not doctors of any kind. So we're not giving you medical advice. All I'm doing is giving you some ideas of the stuff that we keep and use here on our farm for our animals. You need to consult your veterinarian if you have any kind of issues that you're concerned about. Okay, so with that said, this is what we do. A lot of the stuff that we use as humans can also be used for animals, such as triple antibiotic. We've got a little two of that here. Here's another one. Well, um, we, we get these at Walmart. You can pick them up anywhere, you know, drugstores of any kind. Um, I keep a pair of scissors in case we ever have to do any kind of a bandage or anything like that on an animal uh, to bandage their leg or something like that. You've got those to, to be able to cut stuff with. Um, I also have a, a big pair of scissors in here too, actually. Um, when we had pigs, we had to administer some medication to them from time to time. And so we get these little syringes with the needle. Um, you can get these from um, pretty much anywhere that sells uh, supplies for animals, uh, tractor supply, rural king, um, and whatever, okay? So we keep these on hand also. Um, and we got different sizes of syringes here to use. And so if you have an animal that, uh, that's sick or that you know, needs some kind of medication put in by a needle, then you need to keep those. They sell the needles um, for these in different sizes. And so you will need to find out when you go to look for this sort of thing, what size needle do you need for whichever animal it is you're treating, okay? So that's one thing that we keep and use. This is actually a syringe also, and it also doubles, and I think I have it here, yes. Um, it also doubles as one of these. Um, we use this if we need to to put something down the animal's throat. And so you can fill this tube here and, and then this would actually just go in the animal's mouth and you squirt it down their throat. This is a good thing to have also. We got this, I think from Tractor Supply or Rural King, I don't remember where. We have both of those near us and so we shop there a lot. Uh, this is just another syringe, a different size, uh, depending on how much of whatever it is you're administering uh, will determine what size of these you need. We keep several sizes, as you can see, um, that um, you know we can use whatever we need. This is actually called a drench. If you need to put this down the animal's throat in their in their mouth through their mouth, uh, this is a drench. It can also it also doubles as a syringe with a needle. We can put a needle on here as well. And so if that is something that you uh, want to invest in so that you've got both uh, available, then this is a good thing to get. Okay, um, another thing that we keep around here is called ear mite lotion. This is usually advertised, in fact, it has a picture of a dog and a cat on here. This is used for, their, for the animal's ears. We keep this on hand for our rabbits. Sometimes our rabbits get ear mites, and so you just put this in there. Um, this is actually, it has aloe vera in it and it is actually, um, uh, let me see here, essential oils is what this is made of. So there's not really any kind of, you know, chemicals that you don't want. Um, this is made from pennyroyal, lemongrass, and lavender. 
and it smells good too. Um, I use this on my rabbits a lot. I keep a couple bottles of these around, um, and so that's a good thing to have. Uh, let's see what else is here. Another thing is blue coat. We use this. Um, I've used it on the chickens. I've used it on the goats, on the pigs, whatever. If they get any kind of a cut or something like that, especially with chickens. If you put this on your chickens, if they've got a cut and you spray this on them, the other chickens won't peck at it and mess it up. Because chickens, um, if they see something red, especially red, um, they're going to peck at it to see what it is. And then they just keep pecking and pecking. And before you know it, the wound that they have is worse than it started out to be. So if you spray it with this blue coat, the chickens, the other chickens won't even mess with them because they don't see it. Um, it's also, it's a germicidal and a fungicidal, it says on the can. It's an antiseptic protective wound dressing. I have used this for several years and it does good. It works good. It's a good, it's a good thing to have. So get you some blue coat if you have some, if you, if you can find it. Um, let's see, another thing that we use um, in animal care is like an iodine. We've used this on the pigs, um, especially if you're um, raising pigs and you're doing castration on them. This is a good thing to have. Um, you can get this from any drugstore. They carry it. And we actually get this from a, uh, a nurse friend of ours who gets it from the hospitals um, and that kind of thing. Um, she's actually an operating room nurse. And whenever they do an operation, they open one of these. And if they use just a little bit out of it, then they throw the rest of this away. And she just collects it and brings it home because there's nothing wrong with it. It's still good stuff. We keep this around. We've used this on our chickens also that have had cuts in the past. Um, and we've, like I said a minute ago, we've also used it on the piglets when we do the castration of the piglets. Uh, we put this on, we douse them with this stuff to keep them from getting infected and that kind of thing. So this is a good thing to have. Um, let's see what else. Another good thing to have around is a thermometer. Um, <clears throat> You will need to get um, a thermometer that can be used in the anus, obviously, because you know animals won't put something in their mouth like humans do. Um, so keep a thermometer around. That's a good way to keep up with. You know, if the animal has a fever, you're not going to know it unless you you know got some other way to find out. So that's a good thing to have around, also. Um, this is the no. Oh, this is the packs of the little the, the little packs. The little packs that the needles come in that we were just talking about a minute ago um, I get these from uh, tractor supply and I usually keep a couple of different sizes um, one this one is a three-quarter inch long and this one is a one inch long and then, again just depending on what kind of animal you're you're treating it determines what size you need I also keep around um, some of these gloves these nitrile gloves some ones that they use in the hospitals and the doctor's offices and that kind of thing um, it, I recommend you use these, especially if you're treating an animal that has a cut or something like that. Um, this is a good thing to have. I also put in here a package of, um, of cotton balls and Q-tips that is good to use. These Q-tips especially are good if you're putting triple antibiotic on a cut of, a, of an animal, like a chicken or something like that. You can use these, I use these all the time to just dab on some triple antibiotic on a cut if I don't have the blue coat available. I use these, so I keep a package of these around. I don't remember where we got these from. These probably came from Walmart or um, maybe the Dollar Tree or something like that. You can find a lot of medical stuff in the Dollar Tree and any of the dollar stores. Um, another things that we keep around are, uh, these are called non-woven drain sponges. These are little sponges like they use in a, in a hospital uh, or a doctor's office. Um, and you can use these to dress a wound if you need to on an animal. And that'll, that's a good thing to have around also. One of the best things that we like to have is a cohesive bandage, it's called. This is the stuff that they use in, like in the doctor's office. When you go to give blood and they put that little piece of gauze on your arm and then they wrap a piece of that stuff around it this is the stuff and it's good stuff we really like this we keep a lot of this around um, not only for the animals but for us as well um, if you go back and look at our uh, past video recently we did uh, you'll see that on there that we we show that in that video so go back and check that out you can see that um, and how we did that 
Another thing that we I've recently started to use is called Veteracin Plus. I guess that's how you say it. It's an antimicrobial wound and skin care. Um, and it shows a picture of a dog, a cat, a rabbit, and a parrot. This is good stuff too. It's just a spray. Um, if you've got an animal that has a cut or whatever and you don't have blue coat available, this is another thing that you can use. I have used this. It works good too. Um, so this is a good thing to keep around as well. These are just some more of the uh, sponges like we were just talking about. Um, I think these are probably a little bit larger than the ones I just showed. Um, let's see what else is here. Um, here's another bottle of Betadine. So we already talked about that. Oh, another thing that I keep around for the, especially for my birds, for the chickens and ducks and that kind of thing, there's vitamins with, um, with electrolytes in it. The, this you can get from, you know, any, probably any store that carries stuff for animals. And this one is a probiotics uh, for poultry. It contains a source of live, natural occurring vi uh, microorganisms. So this is a good thing. You just put this, a little bit of this in their water and let them drink it and they get that into their system. Um, and that's, you know, that's a good thing to have uh, for the poultry. And so I try to keep some of this around and it just gives them a boost. Another thing that we use as humans is hydrogen peroxide. You can use this on your animals. We use it on the animals sometimes too. If we've got, you know, if we've got something that, uh, we had a while back, we had a chicken who got an abscess on her underneath her uh, belly right here actually. And we didn't know it was there because we couldn't see it. And for whatever reason, I happened to be looking at her one day and picked her up and she had a big abscess on her underneath her belly there. And so we ended up having to treat it with peroxide to just kind of boil that thing out because it was looking pretty nasty. And so we used peroxide on that and that worked out pretty good. Another thing that is good for larger animals like sheep and pigs and that sort of thing is called teramycin. Um, it's for scours. And so if your animal is sick, um, this is a good thing to get. This is a tablet form and probably you probably would have to poke it down their throat to get them to take it. I don't know, sometimes animals will eat stuff like that if you offer it to them, sometimes they don't. Um, so if they you know, happen to not wanna take it, then you have to just kind of poke it down their throat to get it into them. Um, another thing that we use, especially when we had goats, um, for parasites and worms and that sort of thing is chewing tobacco. Believe it or not, this works really good for worms. Uh, my goats loved it. Um, so I would just get a, a big pinch of it and put it in my hand and hold it down and they would just gobble that stuff up. They really like this. Um, and this one here, I don't know, it's American, America's Best. You can get it in Red Man, I think, or whatever. You know, I don't chew or anything. I, I keep this on hand strictly for the animals. Um, and so whenever we have to have something like that to treat the animals, it's a whole lot less expensive to do something like this if your animal needs to be treated for worms than it is to have a vet come to your farm and that kind of thing. Um, and sometimes, depending on the severity of whatever it is that they have it already, this may or may not uh, suffice to get rid of whatever they've got already. So you may have to call uh, a veterinarian, but we've always chosen to try this kind of thing first. And then if it consistently gets worse, um, then we have to call somebody, then we do. But this is always like the first thing that we do uh, before we go uh, spending a lot of money calling a veterinarian. Now, of course, you know, if, uh, if that's not an uh, option for you and, you, uh, and that, that's what you wanna do, then that's fine. <clears throat> Back to talking about uh, castrating pigs and doing other kinds of things. Sometimes you may have uh, a situation to where you have to actually suture up a, a cut or something on one of your animals. And if you know how to do that sort of thing, that's great. Uh, but one of the things that we get, and we, and again, we get these from our nurse friend, she gets them for us. Um, these are sponges that they use you know, to, to use in, actually in the operating room. Um, and we keep several of these on hand along with the betadine uh, lotion or betadine, yeah, betadine, iodine. Yeah, iodine, okay. Uh, so anyway, so we keep that on hand. And she has recently gotten us <clears throat> these little packages and it comes with a bunch of different things in it. 
Um, and we use these a lot whenever we're doing castration for pigs and that sort of thing. Or again, if you're doing some kind of uh, suturing an animal, you may want to have this on hand also. Um, it comes as a little package and it comes with a pair of gloves. Like I said, the surgical gloves that they use in the operating rooms. It also has, let's see, no, actually this just has gloves in it. Okay, so this is actually just two pairs of gloves. Um, uh, yeah, this is just, actually it's one pair of gloves, I'm sorry. One pair of gloves, it's a right and a left hand. So we got these, and then we get these things from her also. She has given us these things. These are just little towels um, for, you know, it's a pad actually that you can put underneath the animal, you know, if they're bleeding or something, or if you're, again, if you're doing the castration, um, that kind of thing. Um, so we keep, you know, a few of these on hand in this bag here. And if we ever need something like that, we can just grab this bag and go. Um, we've had a, <clears throat> sorry for the noise. We've had a couple of uh, situations here on the farm where we had to, to have that kind of stuff. And so we, we keep it on hand. Um, that's pretty much it as far as, you know, some of the things that we use. I'm sure there's more stuff that I didn't mention. Um, and I'm, I've probably got more stuff too in the house that I just failed to bring and show. Um, so if you've done this kind of thing and um, you've seen it work or not work, tell us about it. Um, leave it in the comments if you would and tell us what your situation was and how it worked out for you. Um, if it turned out good or if it turned out bad. Um, everybody that sees our videos learns something and also people learn from the comments that the rest of you put on there. So we can all learn together by the video and by the comments and hopefully grow and continue to thrive on the farm and the homestead and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we're looking forward to uh, hearing your comments. Um, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe, click the little bell, and it'll tell you when we have a new video coming out. And also leave us a comment and don't forget to give us a like, okay? So, thanks for joining me today on Hideaway Homestead, and we'll see you next time.